got my back, boy. Please don't think it's sweet. I stay with the heat, even though I'm a sad boy. You better watch the way you breathe around me for the breath of your last boy. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. It is time for the ninth part of this series. Thank y'all so much for still supporting this. I thought that most people would have given up interest in this, but I'm glad that y'all didn't because it really is hard for me to continue this series the way I want to as well. Not all of you have read the manga, I assume, and I'm going to be spoiling shit for you. And I just didn't say spoiler warnings for like any other part because like you know what you're getting into. Because we all know the Black Clover movie been popping lately. And I don't really mind going into the manga. It's just like people are not going to be as interested. And the manga is not finished yet, obviously. So I don't know how to end it myself. But I've, I've started to get back on it. So I'm on the 10th part already ahead of this. So don't worry about it. Next part's going to come very fast. Um, yeah, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Lay back. Enjoy the show. I hope y'all like the Arthur what if that I finally made. Jesus Christ, y'all went crazy. And uh, yeah. Let's get started with the recap. So, we began with Ferno helping Nero get to the Wizard King statue at that skull, which turns out to be the real Wizard King sealed. He and Nero um, turn out to be, well, people who have been working together for like years, they knew each other. Uh, they go to the Shadow Palace, dropping Ferno on the way, and meet the Clover Knights. They're, uh, they're me, also, you know, Pautry and uh, Asta, who is still not healed. But when he does, he enters uh, Saint stage, even though he's not fully healed, because he's pushing himself, killing Zagrid after Yami fires a dimensional slash, with the devil being defeated. And uh, Asa then woke up in the house of Silva, where we watch Noel face and say goodbye to her siblings. The Black Bulls then begin to investigate uh, devils and later find one in the Heart Kingdom, and they go and find the Heart Queen, uh, who suggests an alliance. Obviously, also, there's the scene where Asta just completely, like, shuts the hell up out of all the nobles who are trying to talk some bullshit. But, yeah, you already know what it is. Go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So, they do an alliance, which is co-signed by Julius, and a time uh, skip would occur six months past. And afterwards, we see Asta saving people uh, from this contraption that's sapping their other magic at the borders in between the Heart and Spade Kingdom. His allies are doing the same elsewhere, but when he returns home, he finds Dante nearly killing Ghosh and enters Saint Stage and begins to thoroughly beat him. So, filled with determination, Grace sheds tears as she unleashes her magic on Ghosh, thinking, It might be embarrassing, but I want you to look at me. Now that I'm stronger, so please don't die. Covering Ghosh in her mana, she completely closes up his wounds, leaving Vanessa at a loss for words at just how easily she did so. Their attention at this point is then drawn to the battle just like the other bulls. The battle has been going on for a little uh, long at this point already, and Yami has just arrived which made the Black Bulls feel even safer as uh, coming out of um, the portal, he would then swing through Dante who is being thrown at him by Asta at this moment and splits him in half. Dimensional Slash. Equinox. As he gags, Dante is split in two but smiles as his flesh begins to flail and reattach. Ferno would then pull her down, running to everyone and checking on them. No one's hurt, right? He asked. Not anymore, said Vanessa. Good work, Gray. Now floating before and behind him, Asta and Yami are a bit surprised by his magic regeneration abilities with the captain remarking. This dude, he is not human anymore. They watch as his body contorts and changes in size as well until he becomes a behemoth with extra arms below his usual ones. How dare you? How dare you mark me? Holding his blade forward, Yami would then say, Let's show him, Asta. Right. Turning his staff to a blade, he and Yami would then rush forward as Dante drops, avoiding them and tearing the ground apart with the crash before then releasing and shooting boulders to the sky and turning them to blades molded by gravity. And they would be forced to dodge, kick off of them, landing down and going, from, uh, going at him from the sides. They would strike down with Dante not being fast enough to dodge as his head is severed, pissing him off as he quickly goes to reattach when his neck is then grabbed by flaming chains, as are all his other limbs. Death thrust, yells Yami, as he releases a, just a devastating pressure that erases his entire torso to nothing with the sheer power of his strength and mana, right before Asa then confines the remaining parts of the man in a cage. Spirit dies, Saint Magic. Collapsing Star. As he quickly rebinds himself, though forcefully, his clothes are now shredded and his body diminishes in size back to normal as Dante would scream trying to counter the power of the cage, going to crush him. This causes space to warp, slowly pushing everything away from this convergence point, leaving Dante smiling. 
Yes, yes. This is what I was looking for, Asta. I swear I'll thank you properly after I kick your teeth in. With the final scream, he obliterates the spell, sinking himself into a crater and forcing Fernal to transport he and everyone else away from the battle as far as he can, while Asta and Yami would then stand fast with Yami asking, You got this? I got the rest, Captain. Good. That dude's creepy as hell. As he begins to walk off, getting out of the crater, with dust blinding him, Dante would go 80% again and release his Descent of the Demon King, blowing away the dust to show Asta making his way forward with an unwavering gaze, and he would then turn his blade to a staff once again, which he then taps down, and it would explode with even more mana than before. Dante is in a nervous sweat. That smile of his disappears, as Asta says, I guess you'd never know what it's like to be able to lose, but I do to a certain degree because I've been crowned the strongest by my squad, however, I'll take responsibility for them. What's with this mana? Was he hiding it? Thought Dante. As he points his staff forward, Asta would then swing it down and it, he would then stop letting it go as it begins to float and spin by itself as he would then clasp his hands together for the sign of the boar. He would then begin to be pulled towards Asta. Dante can't even stop himself and uses Lucifer's power, but it is not doing anything. Spirit dive. Saint stage magic. Finish him, thought Yami. However, just then a creepy feeling runs down his spine as he's stabbed from behind. The bulls see him. Zenon steps out of his gate, butchering Yami with more of his bones, and Asta stops, turns. Ca Captain Yami! A portal will then form behind Dante, who jumps back into it, disappearing. Asta! I know Vanessa Senpai. He grabs and then swings his staff and, um, towards the direction of his comrades, lending the witch's mana as she moves her cat of fate towards Zenon, who steps out fully, saying, It's useless. Instantly, the cat would then fade to nothing, as a massive cube of mana blocks him off from the group entirely, who charge forward, as does Asta, who actually manages to tackle his way through into the area, landing and swinging down as he turns his staff back into a blade. Zenon would sidestep to the left as he gets his ear cut off. His magic is not being dominated, he thought. He has more magic than me? He was shocked completely, but Asta still felt he was a bit restrained, he wasn't used to the spell yet, so he relied on his sun breathing as his mark lit up and he appeared right before Zenon slicing and slicing him over and over with all his strength. Zenon would keep dodging, but he still gets cut pretty badly before he would then throw Yami into the portal behind. From outside, the bulls would hit the cube, hit it over and over, unable to break it as Asta would scream in agony, Give him back! Give him back! His eyes explode with light as he swings down, and Zenon's eyes widen. In a split moment, the cube is blown away with the ground tearing in two for five miles. I'm not over-exaggerating that. That shit almost reached Hodge Village. And the bulls, as well as Asta, had lost because Zenon was gone. Gah! Filled with absolute anger, Asta would exit the same stage with Libe sharing his pain as he falls to his knees when the bulls approach and they thank him for trying. Don't worry, we'll get him back, said Gosh. This isn't the end. It's not. Those bastards are gonna pay, said Libe. Cutting to what used to be the glorious Golden Dawn base, Yuno screams to the skies, angered by his own weakness, surrounded by those he was now left in charge of. The devil hosts and dark disciples struck like the plague and wiped out everything, and as much as he searched for them, Asta couldn't find his other comrades who were attacked by Megucula, but he knew they were alive. It was bizarre. He could still feel them. He just didn't know where to go. Little Petrica was taken as well, and as night falls, the captains gathered to talk with Asta and Yuno being present, both not looking very chipper compared to how they usually are, and honestly, all the captains are very alike to them, being extremely morbid and serious. And that's the report from the Black Bull, said Asta. I currently still don't know the location of the others. Right now, we just need to focus on getting Yami and Vanjons back, said Julius, or we'll have to repeat the last incident. This tree of clip off from what I've heard from the Queen connects our worlds to the underworld. On the outside, though, raging and, you know, on the inside, though raging, a worried um, Charlotte keeps a control and stoic demeanor. We fought with everything we had, but they were easily more powerful than captains. They weren't even trying, said Yuno. Oh, really? You sure you didn't just overestimate them a bit? Asked Jack. Enough with the taunting stuff we're going on. We need to focus on saving them. Yeah, whatever. Screw that, said Jack. With them standing and walking off, as Nozel would then stand, asking him to be calm. I hope you're not thinking of going to the kingdom yourself. 
Huh? Who the hell would pull a stunt like that for those idiots? Even if I was, it wouldn't be with any of you bastards. Fogluna would then try to intervene, but this is when Asta has enough. Sit down. The density of his mana freezes the three and any other who were about to speak up, leaving Jack pissed as he tells Asta to not meddle with him. I'll cut you. I'll kill you. And I don't say that very often, so you better believe when I say I have no qualms limiting someone who constantly thinks about fighting with absolutely no impulse control. I never seen Asta this mad before, thought Ro. As he keeps his stare, Asta and him would just like understand and come to a mutual agreement. Jack sits the hell down because he finna die for real. And he would say, well, we're not getting anywhere with this meeting anyway. The pressure of Asta fades and the other captains take a seat saying that him causing problems won't help either. Get to see you're all motivated. Instantly, they all turn now seeing knocked on the other side of the meeting table. You're late, knocked, said Asta. My bad, I was a bit held up. You know this man, asked Charlotte. He's the former Black Bull vice captain. I was introduced to him when I took his role. Now I'm wondering if I ever deserved it. N Noct was doing reconnaissance in the Spade Kingdom, said Julius. You can trust him. Noct would then reveal the plan and the process that will be taking place as a result of the Devil's um, escape from the Underworld and this plan that the Dark Triad have will cause the world to of course be flooded by Devils unless stopped. And there are seven gates in the Underworld holding different levels of Devils based on, of course, strength. The upper level ones are as strong as the Dark Triad and the lower ones are just monstrosities. And if the King of the Devils emerges as a catalyst, Yami and William will die, said Noct. What? Why would they even do that? Asked Rue. That's just destroying the entire world. Wouldn't know. It's likely that this isn't their plan at all. They gain basically nothing from it, but I don't care why. As Magic Knights, you've seen their type before. People who would do anything for their own desires with no guilt. Those three are the paragons of that breed. I'll never forget that unjust evil. That being said, I can't defeat them. I know my limits, so I'll leave the rest to my vast captain. As he looks to Asta, he sees that he is drastically, uh, drastically different from when he first was introduced to him, saying, his smile, it's gone. Okay, so I need the ones with the highest chance of winning, said Noct. Asta's already included. All magic effectively is useless before him, so obviously we're going, said Jack. Then please let me go as well, said you know. What? After you lost, asked Jack. I was planning on taking you regardless, said Noct. You'll be useful, but I do have to ask. Since I've been looking over the entire Spain Kingdom for a while, I know they have a rebellious group. One of those members went to your old home. Why is that? Someone came to our house, asked Asta. Yeah, apparently I'm the crown prince of the Spay Kingdom. The room goes completely silent with Asta putting his hands to his chin. As I expected of my brother. Shouldn't you be way more surprised, asked you know. Doesn't really matter to me either way, honestly. He's a prince, huh? Thought Charlotte. That actually explains a lot. Wait a minute, said Nozelle. What of Asta? As everyone now looks at him, the possibility of his normal status hangs before them, and Nox says, maybe one day you'll find his kingdom, but as far as I know, Asta is as common as they come. What about him is common to you, they all thought. Regardless, as crazy as it is to unpack all of this, they choose to do so later, and Yuno know, says though everyone may not trust William because of what happened with the elves, to the Golden Dawn, he's someone that they must save. Captain Von Johns fought for us with his life on the line. We, the Golden Dawn, are the strongest squad. We're going to prove that right here, right now. His mana fluctuates, leaving everyone surprised by the amount of it and how much he's actually gathering. And Jack is about to say, Would you stop talking so- Hey, would you shut it? Asked Belle. She formed, showing to be gathering the magic. I'm storing all we can, so we can take down that jerk. You know it's through with losing. The very wind in the air convulses towards him by command, and they can tell that he'll go even if they try to hold him back. And seeing Yuno care so much reminded Asta what his goal was, and he stood, began to walk off as Libe formed beside him, gathering tons of mana as well, which begins to heat up the room. Where are you going, Asta? asked Julius. Three days left? I'm gonna train my heart out. And my squad. And we'll rip that gravity and creepy bastard to shreds, said Libe. Gather all the bulls. We're training, said Asta. As he knocked, Oct would, uh, knocked, my bad, knocked, knocked would fall into his own shadow, disappearing as Asta closes the door behind, and now Yuno is even more motivated than before. The countdown until the attack begins, with the devil hosts themselves knowing what it means if they meet Asta again. 
Unless the gates open, allowing them to access all their power, they will die. A time skip two days. We find all the bulls staggering to stand as they surround Asta. They stand in a very wild, plain, broken, torn, and just destroyed place from their fight. And Asta would stand, most tired of all, sheeting his blade into a scabbard as he had fought all of them by himself just so he could make sure that his skills were up to par. We're getting it all back. Captain Yami, our friends, everything. As they raised their gazes, their words didn't even need to be expressed. Their looks were enough. And the day of the battle soon came, with the following knights heading to Spade. You know, Charlotte, Jack, Langris, Nozelle, Dorothy, Vigolion, Ralph, Radies, Maxa, Sally, and Valtos, and also Seke, who just basically is terrified. She shivers in fear as a group gets ready to leave at the castle tower. And, uh... Noct makes his way to the rooftop as Fogolion asks where Asta is, and the man says he's taking a bit more time to figure something out. What? Asta's not coming, says Sally. Also, by the way, you may be confused if you haven't read the manga or you just don't care about this guy. Maxa is someone who is versed in magical items, so think of him as a technical support guy. He works with Sally. He's the guy that I guess will be connected to the magical division in the movie if you've seen the movie. If you haven't, go see the movie. And Nozelda asks, can we really trust the items that she made? Yes, of course, said Maxa. She's definitely a bit odd, but Sally's the best when it comes to this kind of thing. Good, but you. Jack would then look to Seke, who, like, he says he just can't trust him at all, so he better show his worth. Because Seke is just useless at this point. For now. If you haven't read the manga, you won't know what I'm talking about. Man actually has character development, apparently. So... Even Nox says that he should actually sacrifice himself uh, if it comes to that without joking at all. And he thought, I'm dying. This is my end. With everyone good, however, they would head down Nox's shadow corridor and arrive into the royal castle and spade immediately, which once belonged to the Yunos family, the Grim Burial family. And they see a staircase run up it and split up, taking different directions each. And outside on the streets and in the freezing atmosphere, citizens uh, gather around, get out of their homes, and listen as the resistance against the Dark Triad makes their appearance and goes clear. Their leader would shout, Stop being cowards and come face us, you bastards. We won't let you do as you please anymore. His men stand, they, they stand there without any fear, even though they know they might die, but it's come to that. And honestly, they're hoping that uh, they can divert the attention from their enemies long enough for their saviors to help out because they know the plan. But the ground begins to shake as a massive demon rises from the ground, tearing houses apart. People begin to run as it towers over them like ants. Panning over to the lab of Morris, who originally came from the, the Diamond Kingdom, we see Xenon watch as the ancient demon attacks only to be clobbered by Mariliona, knocking it back as it crashes while she would lead the resistance in awe of her strength. Not bad, you maggots. Name's Merleona Vermilion. I'll lend you a hand since you got some guts at least. This makes Zenon frown, but also realizes that something more must be happening, and so he heads out scouring the castle uh, with spatial magic, teleporting everywhere, until he finds himself in a throne room. The throne room that, of course, the, the, the old king and queen used to rule. And just then, on the scene arrives Yuno and Langris behind him. He turns to see his enemies. Jack and Noct meet Dante while Charlotte and Rill meet Vanaka and the battle begins. Everyone revs up their power to the max showing new amazing spells. You know, uses Saint Stage. Jack cuts through gravity itself. Charlotte uses Briar Magic which then actually turns her, uh, her curse into power. Sorry about the stuttering. That scene is just really cool. And so on. Rill, by the way, is just a fucking god. This man can just basically just create everything now. But he still gets his ass beat. But like, if you read the manga, you know what I'm talking about. So they fight, and eventually the tree of Klipoth rises as its branches pierce the castle, allowing the enemies to rise in power. I can feel it. As Asta opens his eyes, we find him atop the Clover Castle, med uh, meditating. And he would stand as Libe takes form, having changed once again, now having a goatee with a more built body, matching that of his partner. And he now wears something close to Yosuga, but red and black. Yosuga is someone that we will meet in Hino Country later on in the manga, who's one of the, the Ryuzen 7. He's really cool. So basically, he has that, but it's in red and black. Asta's mark also no longer shows on his skin, and his star eyes were gone, but the aura around him. Julius just 
he felt it and he was in his office when Marx asked him, Sir, do you feel that? Yes, I... He and Marx didn't feel an eerie amount of mana as everyone in the capital begins to scream when seeing the dead demon killed by the first wizard king rise from afar not stronger than ever and even more bloodthirsty, this massive behemoth luckily runs away from Asa's home but heads for the clover capital, wildly swinging its many arms with magic knights quickly reinforcing their barrier, but then they hear a voice. It's okay, leave it. They all turned to see Asta standing atop the wall with a smile and their morale instantly rose as he flew towards the demon right as its foot nearly crushes the walls. The knights would have attacked before in the original like, you know, they should have, but they knew they would just be getting in Asta's way. Sun breathing. As the tip of his blade makes the slightest impact, he swings across the demon's body and it is blasted to nothing but ashes in an instant as the imprint of the sun marks itself like a shining emblem of hope and everyone erupts into tears unable to hold their excitement. Asta blasts off sheathing his blade and ready himself to, he's ready himself to like unsheath it like in a powerful power move. Nice work Asta, shouts Klaus. Yeah go get them, we'll hold everything down here. Just then as he's waving goodbye to everyone, uh, he's flying and the devil Gimodello or I'm pretty sure it's Gimodello. If it's not Gimodello, tell me in the comments. But the devil that is usually with Noct as part of a contract shows itself on his shoulder. That's my spot, said Libe. I don't care. Mr. Nax going to die if you don't get there in time, please. Oh, duh, idiot. Where do you think we're going, said Libe. Play nice. Don't worry, we're here. Guys, he taps a magic piece on his ear, asking, you better show up on time. On the other line, we see a portal in a dark room through which out burst the Black Bulls and also Paltry, Leopold, and the Spirit Guardians as they land in the Land of Spade. That was a really weird sentence. As they arrive in the Land of Spade, they use a combined blast of magic each that is aimed at the devils that were about to attack the citizens. These blasts obliterate the lowering devils but don't even hurt those they don't wish to harm that were in their way, like in their line of fire, leaving everyone amazed and most importantly for Golion, uh, who was there already on the scene he was like just caught off guard because obviously they haven't been seen in a while and then right out of nowhere asta lands before them all perfectly timing his entrance we're killing all of them right now said asta you got it vice captain however more devils then head their way so of course asta leaves this to them taking to the castle as they each release true magic and obliterate the rest of all of them using new forms new powers luck looks really sick by the way and asta crushes in through a window and lands in a place meant for serenading it was a church in the castle and yet what he saw before him left him angry the same went for Libe as they appear before Noct, slicing off the arms of Nama and Lilith, supreme devils whose laughs was stopped. Instead of, you know, them usually being filled with ecstasy, they're replaced with confusion, and Noct is now filled with hope because Ost is here. Huh? They got sliced off? asked Nama. Now standing in the land bathed with ice, basically now a frozen hell, Asta looks as composed as ever, honestly, with Gimondel then in tears running to Noct. <laughs> the blood curdling laughs of the two devils echo, sending chills down Gimodelo and Nox's spine because their magic was so oppressive. Centuries, we spent centuries, and this has never happened. In the underworld, it's so boring. Entertain us, human. Releasing blasts of ice and fire at the boy, their laughs only get louder and louder to the point where it bothers Asta, who calmly asks, Please quiet down. He swings with the crescent slash, monozone. All the ice held onto the walls and the area is instantly raised to nothing. Everything disappears as if they never laid waste to this entire place. What? What's going on? Burn, human! Scream! Turn to ash! Freeze to your death! As they try and try, their magic does not even come out. They cannot fire anything at all. Asta calmly marches forward, his steps filling the silence that had now set in and the twin devils for the first time feel something they never had. Is this fear? thought Nama and Lilith. Asta's mark and star eyes flicker on and off, appear on him and disappear, making the devils convulse as they fall to the floor, feeling themselves burning from the inside as they roll on the ground in pain. Ugh, ugh, stop it, I'm gonna freaking kill you. It hurts. You must be confused. For being such as yourselves, losing must have never crossed your mind. 
Welcome to my world. Within this zone, all those considered my friends heal while my enemies burn, feeling the power of the sun. Sun surface. As the pulse of heat explodes from Asta, they give one last scream, giving, well, everything, including their lives and souls, to the world before dying, shedding tears for the first time as the zone would disappear. Asta would then turn, seeing Noct standing, fully healed, thank God. And he says, let's go help the others. Noct in that moment saw the light he saw in Asta before it had returned, and he could only be reminded of his brother before, who, you know, his late brother who died. And he who rarely does smile has a heartful smile for once in a while, saying, As you wish, Vice Captain. The eerie aura from the castle disappears as everyone uh, all at once feels a warm presence, and it especially gets to Dante as his heart starts thumping. And he just beat Jack, but it wasn't over. A loser. As he looks forward, Dante sees Magna and Zora walk past the magic knight. Why are you dweebs here? Get lost, said Jack. I'm not done yet. Agreed. I only have eyes for your vice captain. You really don't want to do this. His aura seeps out, showing obvious ill intent, which terrifies Magna to the core. He can't even hide it. I know, damn it. I know I can't be bastards like you, he thought. I ain't got God given talent like Asta, or that you know bastard, or even luck. But that's not why Captain chose me. He throws an exploding fireball at the devil, blindsiding him with smoke as he then looks down at his chest and an array forms out it, letting out a chain of flames that instantly forces him out of a 100% state. What the? This chain then binds itself to Magna's chest as well as he advances forward, whamming Dante to the floor with a strike so powerful it makes him bleed. I was chosen because I have grit. We will now have a flashback. One to Asta facing Magna in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and surprisingly, Magna's movements were extremely powerful with every swing and kick, cutting like through the air practically without like using e barely even any magic, even if he was using some. But it wasn't just to like make himself more powerful; it was to help his respiratory system and enhance his muscles to a ridiculous degree. You're telling me the second I can do this stuff like with barely any magic? As he catches a punch of his, Asta would say, "Of course you can." Why do you think I made sun breathing? And now, I'm passing it on to you, senpai. As we return to present time, Magna breathes in, with his muscles failing with blood and completely getting jacked. Dante gets back up, wobbled, but seething. Oh, how the hell did you do that? Secret chain magic. Soul death match. How do you light me now? He strikes him in the gut as he creates brass knuckles using flames. This makes the devil host spew blood, but he strikes back using gravity magic on, you know, on his fist, which Magna dodges, grabbing his arm and then elbowing him right in the face. Ugh, you bastard. He presses down Magna, who ignores this, breathing in and rushing forward as he strikes Dante, sending him flying until the chain is strained, and Magna grabs it, yanking Dante over and striking him to the floor again. This chain is attached to our souls, by the way, so don't even think about yanking it out. You'll go insane. Dante would heal, however, screaming with a smile that it doesn't matter as he throws him to the sky using gravity and then bringing him down with an uppercut as Magna falls back on his fist. Magna would then backflip and land, bleeding at the mouth, and Dante comes over to him and just like starts whamming on him, and Magna does his best to dodge and dodge and then strikes him in the stomach and then his face before kicking and kneeing him and then karate chopping him in the neck cracking his backbone but just as he buckles dante heals himself again and begins to attack magna again <laughs> it doesn't matter how good you are at fighting bastard i'm just better you're no more than an important piece of crap on the side of before he can say another word he exits double form not willingly and his form is laid bare and he's drenched breathing heavily and he's just sweaty he feels like shit you what did you do to me? Nothing, you idiot, says Zora. You never pushed yourself, so you never ran out of magic. I'm still at full capacity, said Magna. You, you, I can't to lose to a nobody like you, damn it. In desperation, he throws a punch far too wide that Magna ducks and then breathes in, sending the man flying to the sky as the chain would then fade away and Dante crashes, bleeding at the mouth. Yeah, how you like me now? Shouting his heart out to the sky as Magna announces his win as luck and knocked a would arrive on the scene and jack thought the hell how does that make any sense that that scrub really won at this point the battle between vonica noel 
and Gaja was going on, as Gaja would grab a hold of little Pechika, who is being controlled by curse magic, while Noel drives Monica into her um like her powerful form of like 50%, let's say. And then Noel herself enters Valkyrie form before then swing her spear at the host, who then simply catches it. Did you get even stronger for me, Noel? You shouldn't have. How dare you? How dare you do that to her? As her eyes fill with rage, Noel pushes her away as Undy then forms behind her and wraps her arm around Noel just as tendrils of blood lunge at them, only for them to be blown away to show Noel in Saint Stage Valkyrie form. I'm not just gonna kill you, I'll destroy you, he said. As she rushes forward, Vanika summons her red beast which bites at her but is ripped apart by Noel forming a blade and then just lunging and slicing Vanika's chest open before kicking her to the sky, appearing behind her, kicking her back down. Vanika would crash and catch herself erupting blood spikes that aim for Noel, but are then held back by Charlotte's magic as she gets free of Vanika's previous spell. Do it now, Noel! Landing, Noel would thrust and create a new powerful sea dragon's roar that envelops and clobbers the host to nearly a corpse before she crashes into a building. Noel then runs after her, running her blade through her stomach and then sticking her on a boulder. Just then, Asta would land on the field and everyone takes notice. Took you long enough, said Noel. This is so amazing. I never thought I'd be being like this. Is it friendship? No, more like a product of your own psychopathy, said Asta. Before Vanika could even say another word, however, someone else speaks through her. You are indeed an interesting individual, Vanika, but now that he's here, this just won't do. Spewing from her the negative magic that makes up Megucula himself, he comes out as the wall quickly backs up and the devil takes shape, leaving everyone at a loss for words. The roses from Charlotte's magic begin to wither to nothing. The very air around them corrodes, and Asta unsheaths his blade, and Libe enters his body. Saint stage, he utters, now once again wearing his magic and majestic robes. I finally get to meet you, Megikula. Hello, child. I can't say I feel the same sentiment as you do. Now sitting atop the shoulder of Vanika, who was now basically just a puppet to the devil, he activates the curse on Little Pechika, who pushes away Gaja as she transforms into what could only be described as a devil hybrid. No, Queen Little Pechika. Exploding with mana, Lola would create massive beasts made of water, quite similar to Vanika's spell of the red beast, but just in water form as she rains down these massive things on the battlefield, which Asta responds to by leaping and appearing behind her as he slashes down. Like I said, there's nothing I can't cut. As he says, this Lolo is forced out of her transformation, and water splashes, drenching everyone instead of just destroying them, and Asta would then turn to face the devil. I'm here now, so anything you do won't matter anymore. Oh really, said Megikula. Activating his curse warding magic and swinging at Asta, she would create these he, my bad, he looks like a fucking she, I can't, this dude is creepy, man. So, these massive tendrils of black energy are sent at him and he avoids it while severing them and getting closer and closer to the creature. Just then, Gaja would catch a little Pechika who Asta threw to him and he said, Go Asta! Get her! End this now! Asta turns his blade to a staff, knocking Megicula into a branch of Clipoth as she scowls, releasing blades of blood covered with uh, curse warding magic, just as Asta raises his staff, creating his mana zone. Mana zone. Anti-mana zone. Impossible. How could such a spell truly exist? Truly, what are you? As we have a flashback to Asta and Libe training by themselves, Libe says, Yep, that's what happened. And you you knew my mom? Our mom. Not important right now. I used to be a devil. I don't know how the hell I wound up in your grimoire, but I did. To me, you're like a little brother, and I won't have you dying to those bastards, and... It might take a bit of time, but what are you crying for? As tears rain down his face, Asta says, I can't believe you had to go through all of that. No wonder you can't even stand hearing their names. She was my mom and I didn't even stop that, damn it. I, we're together now, aren't we? I don't regret it. Not a single thing. I just wish I was stronger then. That's what you have me for, said Asta. We now return to the present as Asta lets go of his staff and it begins to spin. He claps his hands together, forming air palms of massive Buddha hands that slam and squash the devil to ashes, releasing a massive shockwave that destroys the devil in the human world completely. I can't believe it. Just like that, said Ro. You're awesome, Asta. Just then, a huge wind would blow their way as everyone looks to the sky, seeing Nozel, and he was here to obviously partake in taking down Megicula, but now he was panicked. Was I too late? Damn it. Nozelle, said Noel. 
Asta's palms then dissipate and from it escape this strand of energy as when Nozelle lands beside Noel, he and her are taken in by a feeling of warmth. They see her, Asir Silva, and she hugs them. You two have grown a lot. You've grown strong. As they shed tears, Asta gives the spirit a bit of his magic, allowing her to last a little longer, and she looks to herself, and then to Asta, who smiles. Thank you, child. Asir then looks back to her kids, now having more time to say what she never could as a mother. I'm sorry, it must have been so hard to endure. Let's catch up. As they hug her back, the curse on Magikula at this point is broken and God just watches the mark disappear on little Pejiga's belly. Asta would then land down and would notice something as he looks to the castle with a smile saying, You know, the child of the royals thinks that not. Even after selling his heart and soul to his devil, pulling out all the stops, taking down Fenrir who with Langris put up a surprisingly good front, even after crushing, you know himself, here he is before him, now with the second grimoire and his spirit reinvigorated. Rising beside him in his wind arc, uh, Langris and Fenrir are picked up and they were left shocked by his transformation. Go find yourselves a maze that can heal you. I'll handle the rest, said you know. A second grimoire. A spade grimoire, thought Fenrir. Seriously, what are you? asked Langris. I'm the vice captain of the Golden of Dawn. What else? I feel like I finally met the real you, said Bell. Me too, but even with that, we need to use everything we have. As she nods gleefully, Bell will then gather mana and combine with Yuno entering Saint Stage once again. Inferno takes away he and Langris, right as Zenon will then release Bone Whips at Yuno, who creates a barrier using star clusters, only to find himself confined in Zenon's cube. You can't escape. It's over. Is it? Instantly teleporting behind him, you know he uses and creates a blade that he swings at Zenon, who barely blocks it using his dance lift, only to be pierced in the shoulder by a ray. You know then pushes through and cuts, almost reaching his now devil heart, but Zenon would then explode with bones, filling the entire room as you know would then disappear, appearing all over and over and over, creating these mirages with his insane speed. I'm gonna crush you. As he regenerates, Zenon would then turn, swinging and meeting you know for another clash. All my choices weren't wrong. They weren't. I'm not prove it, said Yuno. He pushes him back and conjures more stars, lining up a ray that then pierces him, and then by literally grabbing this ray of light, light that pierced the devil host, Yuno would turn it into a whip that he then uses to riddle the devil with like cut after cut, and Zenon creates portals behind Yuno that release massive bones, and a smile creeps on his face as he also swings at him, appearing right before the man, but Yuno disappears, appearing behind Zenon and ripping through his torso and heart. I win, bastard. At this point, the rest of the Black Bulls, meaning Vanessa, Gordon, Henry, Gray, and Ghosh, barge into the underground lab where Yami and y uh, William are being kept. They interrupt the fight between Lotus and um, Dorothy against the chief scientist, now the host of Lucifero, Morris. Great timing, guys, said Dorothy. You're telling me, said Morris. You guys have some good mages here. We can have a good experiment. Using the low ranked devils rising from the tree at this very moment, he uses his magic to contort them and just use them like tendrils and pieces of flesh to just attack people. But Gray uses her magic to transmutate them to flowers when they're close enough. Look at me, said Ghosh, as she now looks to his glass eye, making more copies of her that allowed them to take care of this much easier as they advance to keep this at bay. But Morris then releases a grand pressure of gravity. <laughs> I win. Oh. He then falls to his knees, finding his mana being sapped as he then sees them, Henry and Gordon. Gordon uses his magic to allow Henry to now target those he only wants to, thus freeing the Black Bull formation, which then crushes the scientists to the floor with a massive punch. Uh, how? I'm supposed to have endless amounts of mana. How can this be? Then the 14 trolley begins to assemble. As Lux said, God, it's been too long. You idiots better not disappear on us again, said Gosh. D don't don't be mean, Gosh. Yeah, after all this, we'll have a party. You mean you just want to eat food, right? That's it? Now standing before the beaten Morris, the bulls make their stand as the vice captain spoke. This game ends here. Now give us back. Captain Yami, they all shout. As being, you know, rowdy is their signature mood, the bulls are so loud that it actually wakes up Yami who is supposed to be stuck in stasis. They are that loud. And it's as if his life began to flash before his eyes. He could only laugh. <laughs> you idiots like me that much? Of course we do, Captain. As they make their way over, he smiles. 
well the feeling's mutual you idiots as they ride on Charmy's cotton ball, they glide their way over, but the stitch markings on Morse would then speak. You've been a great service, human. Just then, the gate is forced to the second level, releasing a mass of even more terrifying creatures that filled the space, crawling about right as Asta leaps forward, and he would then free the two captains, and he would destroy any amount of horde of devils coming his way, and he lands down running back to his friends, doing the same, but then those devils begin to be pulled towards Morris as Asta runs back and they watch as these creatures are forcefully melded together. The voice of Lucifer rings loud and clear. While the second level is active, I am able to control all of these devils creating the ultimate vessel. Those still fighting are pressed by gravity magic all over the entire kingdom as this massive creature rises scarier than any demon ever seen. Oh really? We don't give a damn, shouts the bulls, as their massive formation that slams the creature to the floor with the punch due to them combining all their power together. But this is still Lucifero, and though not fully manifested, he puts up a good fight forcing anyone who can attack to just basically back down because they literally can't stand up. The only reason the black bulls are able to move is because Asta is here and his magic is OP. But there are certain cases like Mariliona and Fulgolion, but at some point they weren't able to hack it either. They at some point were just restricted. They could like stand, but they can't really like do shit. Everyone within the vicinity fell to their faces getting crushed. Mothers, children, husbands, it was indiscriminate. But the monster then saw Asta preparing a slash and Saint stage atop the formation. You, human, aren't you being affected? As he breathes in, his striking mark returns, leaving the king with the bizarre feeling as Asta swings down with incredible speed and dashes towards the devil, appearing right behind it, sun breathing. He is then cleaved horizontally and vertically into four parts as Asta would land, and the pressure releases. The monster tumbles behind him. Dimensional slash. Equinox. Instantly turning to ash, this creature is returned to well, what it was before, which is the underworld, and also to ashes with Asta exiting his saint stage and bumping fists with Libe. Is it really over? Is it done? As they begin to stand, we see families meeting again, you know meaning the resistance, you were actually part of the night order when this kingdom was still peaceful relatively, and they said, I never thought we'd meet you like this prince, you know. Yeah, I'm still not used to that. Hey, did I ever have a twin brother or anything? No, why would you think so? asked Ralph. As he looks to the bulls, they also notice Asta watching as Mimosa heals Yami and William in her OP healing form. Y'all really don't know how OP Mimosa's healing gets, by the way. And they realize, oh, that noble, he's not a noble, said you know. That's why I asked. I guess that settles it. The declaration means nothing now. But man, I feel good. He did all of that despite being just a commoner? Incredible. Hey, why are you dawdling for? As they all turn, they see a devil sitting atop a boulder, like way too close to them for comfort. And he says, you should really get out of here. You know, Lucifer is still manifesting. The next thing they know, someone they've never seen before walks their way. And with his head hanging down, he says, bow, silence. Taken by surprise, everyone is flattened again as more buildings would collapse under this massive pressure that returns even worse this time, turning the once beautiful space kingdom into a true barren land. Lucifer takes to the skies, unwilling to dirty himself when he then senses and grabs an attack from behind. He catches the blade of Asta only for his fingers to be cleaved off. It's you, said Libe. You killed Lichita, you bastard. Combining with Asta, he allows him to use uh, Saint Stage again, and Lucifer will then show extreme displeasure, throwing a light punch, which Asta blocks with a staff, only to release a powerful shockwave behind him, uh, behind him that tears the terrain. Just, I can't, he, this man literally destroyed mountains, man. And Asta pushes him away and swings, but gravity then warps away Lucifer, who ascends to the skies. Pay attention. As he turns, Lucifero then finds the tip of a blade at his eye, and his singularity is formed, clashing with Asta's blade and causing a massive explosion, blowing both of them back. You impertinent little bastard, how dare you try and touch me? Watching from afar, Andramalek, who was the devil who warned the humans, is surprised by Asta's powers. No one can move carelessly in Lucifero's power, but his matches Lucifero's. He's an odd one. 
Blitzing and swinging 20 times in one second, Asta leaves the devil scarred when he's then punched right in the stomach, but Lucifero finds that there was actually no impact. What are you? I'm human. Pushing out his stomach, he forces back Lucifero as he gets in a fighting stance and flashes past the king, appearing right behind him before making a hand sign. Three massive suns then form around Lucifero and clash into one another as light will then radiate, releasing a massive beam that extends from the sky dropping to earth. And from below, the gathered captains watch as Asta begins to fly towards them. He can regenerate extremely quick. That won't be enough. We're playing either way, Samir Leona. I'm not passing up on this. Thanks for the mana zone, said Ro. How long can you keep it up for, though? For as long as I have to. Yeah, currently, Asta spread his sun surface mana zone, allowing them to move normally, and they're fully healed, but their magic hasn't changed much, so yeah. The massive beam is then blown away to show a now raging Lucifero, ravaged and burnt, and quickly regenerates, but the effect of Asta's mana zone is still being a, like put on him. It's just that he regenerates faster than it affects him. And he would then explode with two extra set of arms. All right, human, you forced my hand off thoroughly and correctly crush every single one of your bones. Your family, your descendants, your loved ones, they will all be thoroughly crushed. Warping right to the ground, he's attacked by a combo of Mary Leona and Jack, who swing and swing, but just can't, like, they just can't hurt this man. He can't be burnt, cut, bruised, and he moves in, chopping Jack to the ground with a hit to his neck, kicking away Mary Leona as... He creates and throws over two massive singularities, forcing the captains to dodge out of the way. From the sky, combining his power with Salamander, Fuglina would then release a blast of flames, but Lucifero pierces this and grabs uh, Fuglina by the face, appearing right in front of him. Right, like, it's so hard to describe the speed of Lucifero, man. Like, this man is an absolute beast, even though he gets fodderized pretty quick. Point is, he basically is teleporting but it's just because his physical strength stats are that high. And this is when he hears, over here. As he yells this and goes to attack, Nozelle is then stared at by the king and is blown away, feeling his very bone shatter. We can never beat someone like this. It's impossible. Though his body quickly heals, this fact still stands as flowers then arise with a real activating Valhalla, giving all the captains a boost in power. If you don't know what this is, this is basically a spell that makes all of Ryl's companions immortal and, uh, yeah, it gives a huge boost in power. However, Lucifero is unconcerned with this, seeing them as little of a threat, but Asta is his primary um, one concern. But Asta is nowhere to be found? That's when he thinks, the sun. He looks up seeing him high up in the sky, hiding himself with the brightness of the star, writing a spell. He is about to attack Asta to interrupt him, but dodges a punch from Mariliona. That's my prey, you bastard. Backhanding her away, however, he says that this is all useless when a massive wave of lava comes his way from real. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but we're not going to stop because as long as we can let Asta prepare, there will be nothing of you left, says Charlotte. The attack and attack and attack getting broken, broken, rehealed, broken again, but like a miracle star arriving on the scene and releasing a massive dome on top of Asta's mono zone, he, uh, you know allows the captains to move even more freely than before, but Lucifero then dodging a star beam. You owe me for this one, Asta. From above, Asta would smile, saying that he's ready, and he drops, entering the space once again. And at this point, Valhalla is undone. Uh, only Merleona and Yuno at this point are even standing, attacking the king over and over because they only have the uh, only they have the resilience to keep going. Everyone is tuckered out. Like being rehealed over and over only like helps so much. They're physically and mentally fucked. Liebe, I saw. A strange dream at the temple, said Asta to his spirit, as he then rose his blade. What did you see? It was a quiet man. He looked like he lost everything. He was very sad. Seemed lonely. I don't know why I saw it. I don't know who he is. But I know I'll never, ever end up like that. I don't want to end up like that. Then you just have to destroy him. Yeah, I will. Stepping forward... Asta swings down, performing what could be described as the most perfect slash. At that moment, Asta attained the power of absolute swordsmanship, and Lucifero feels heat. The barrage of sword and fist stopped from Mary Leona and Yuno, who looked back seeing Asta say, It's over. Lucifero would be incinerated by pure flames that turn white as he screams with us watching as he is erased from the mortal world. Stars go through different stages of growth until death. 
Asta's powers also advanced and his once no more flames will now always bear the resemblance and heat to that of a sun breathing supernova. As Libby exits his body, he slightly stumbles but is caught by Mimosa. Asta, you did great. Thank you. Arriving on the scene, Nakta and Yami asks if they missed out on the action as Asta would take a seat catching his breath. We're gonna continue to live. Double king or not means nothing to us, thought Asta. Right, mom? What happens to this Bait Kingdom now? Is this really the end of the devils? Find out in the next part of Black Clover, because yes, of course there's another part. Hope y'all enjoyed this. I gotta go drink some goddamn water. Peace. I'm gone. Phenomenon, stacking cheese like it's Parmesan. Eight different flows call me Akamam. I'm moving fast like the Autobahn, and I'm independent, so I'm not your fucking starving like it's Ramadan. Sick twist.